Hey, what's up everybody? Clayton here with Go Analytics, and today in this brand new year, 2025, we are bringing to you seven Power BI hacks to enhance your dashboards and your reports in Power BI. These are tricks that we've been using that have delighted our clients, and we wanted to share them with you. So let's get started. Hey, welcome to our channel. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notifications to stay up to date on all of our latest videos. All right, so today we're talking about seven Power BI hacks to enhance your dashboards and your reports in Power BI. So let's head on over to my laptop and I'll show you now. Okay, hack number one is creating report layouts outside of Power BI. Yep, we're talking Adobe, Figma, Canva, and even good old PowerPoint. Let's dive into this and uh, to see why this approach is pretty awesome and how it can save you time and headaches over time. First, uh, what does this mean? Well, instead of jumping straight into Power BI to build your dashboards, you can create wireframes and even prototypes in these external tools. And uh, this step gives you a total creative freedom to experiment with layouts and designs without having to worry about Power BI's constraints. Well, at least not yet. And uh, why is this so effective? Well, designing outside of Power BI helps align expectations between stakeholders and the report creators. So you can present a clear visual concept before building anything. And trust me, this avoids endless revisions later on. Plus, stakeholders can sign off on the design early so everyone's on the same page. And uh, here's the kicker. It actually improves performance. By planning your visuals ahead of time, you'll use fewer elements per report page, which means faster load times and smoother navigation for your end users, which is pretty cool. And uh, not to mention, it does encourage creativity as well. So you can play around with very bold, innovative designs before bringing them into Power BI. Once you've nailed the look, transitioning to Power BI becomes a breeze because you already have a clear roadmap. Then, once your design is complete, all you have to do is import a PNG or JPEG version of it into Power BI and start working with it. All right, hack number two is using group by to reduce our queries. So you can find this in the transform tab inside of Power Query and choosing the group by button. And this is a really powerful way of taking really large data sets and turning it into something that's more manageable. So uh, in our example here, we're able to take some sales data that's daily uh, and aggregate it uh, by year and month uh, within our data set here. So you can do all sorts of uh, operations and how you want to aggregate all of the columns uh, inside of your data set. Uh, but this is a powerful way, for example, if we never want to report this data in daily uh, and we're only interested in monthly data, uh, we can use this to uh, essentially take our, our daily data and transform it into something a little bit smaller that uh, groups all of our columns by the um, year and month so that we go from uh, a really large uh, data set like this one here that has uh, hundreds of thousands of rows uh, into something that's very manageable um, to create a really nice user experience. Okay, hack number three is replacing uh, the value in a column, uh, replacing multiple values in a column in one step. So if I want to replace the state code, uh, you know, I can go here uh, and replace, you know, NY with NY-New York. Um, and uh, I can do this for each of the states. Um, but, um, you know, the problem is if you know the, the geography of the United States a little bit, you know that there are 50 states uh, and this would take 
quite a long time to do. So, you know, doing this one by one is not the most efficient way to do it. Um, and there are, there is a way for us to do this all in one step. Uh, so the problem with this too, not only is it tedious, but it also adds a new step in our query here each time that we replace a value. So you can see I got three uh, values here. So I'm gonna remove them and let's take a look at how we can do this programmatically using a little bit of M programming. So I just opened uh, the advanced editor here and I'm able to uh, break this up a little bit here into uh, a few lines so that we can really understand what's going on. So the, the first thing that we need to do here is that the first argument in this is what we want to replace. And so we can replace that with our column. So we put each and then our state code column. And then we add in some logic uh, using the if and uh, else if logic. So um, as you can see here, our first argument is if the, the value inside of the state code column is NY, then we're going to replace that with NY dash New York. And uh, on the next line here, we can add our else if statement. So it this would you know go uh, in order. So it would try the first logic, and then if that's not true, then it would try the second logic. So next we're we're testing for a, a second state here, and then we tell it what we want to return instead if it does find that. And then uh, the last argument would be an else statement. So if none of those statements are true, what should it return? Now I do have this code already uh, saved up, so I'm just gonna bring it in here. I'm just gonna copy it and uh, paste it right into our advanced editor. All right, so I'm just going to replace this code here with the code that I had already written and uh, just uh, format this a little bit uh, in something that's a little bit easier to read. So as you can see, I have all the 50 states here now and uh, I'm able to uh, to use that and once I click done, you'll notice that every single value in this column now has been replaced by that logic and we only have one step. So this is pretty cool. All right, hack number four is using small multiples to enhance the visualization in your reports, uh, which allows you to display charts side by side uh, by adding additional information. For example, in this chart here, if we want to add product category as a small multiple, it allows us now to see all of our product categories as a different chart, uh, even though we're still only using one visual inside of Power BI. So this is a good way to, to visualize trends across uh, categories and uh, it still uh, is only one visual so it improves the, the performance so that you don't have multiple reports uh, multiple visuals in your report here so it's a good way to show additional information to your users <laughs> Hack number five is adding dynamic titles to your visuals in Power BI. One of the issues with static titles is that they don't always tell users the full story or they leave users guessing what filters they have applied on that visual. And that's where dynamic titles come in. Dynamic titles use DAX measures to update automatically based on user selections like whatever filters have been applied or slicers. So instead of a generic title like let's say sales report, uh, you can have something like sales report for Q3 2024 in Ontario and all of that gets updated real time which is a super powerful thing. And uh, here's why these dynamic titles are so powerful. First, uh, they provide instant context. Your users are no longer needing to just guess what filters have been applied. They can actually see it right there in the title of the visual. They also improve the readability of your reports. So you don't need to clutter your report with extra labels or explanations because the title does the heavy lifting for you. And uh, let's be honest, dynamic titles just make your dashboards look polished and very professional. It's a, a very small touch, but it leaves a very big impression 
especially with executives and your key stakeholders. If you're not using dynamic titles yet, it's time to start. They're easy to create and the payoff in usability and presentation is huge. All right, hack number six is using bookmarks to create a hidden slicer pane, just like the one we have here, where we can click on this and open up this slicer pane that allows us to do some filterability on our report here. So I can change the date, for example, uh, and I can interact with other slicers that are hidden here and uh, use all of those to filter our report. And uh, using bookmark is how we are able to create this type of interactive visual um, where it's hidden. So creating this is pretty simple. Uh, you have to uh, create your visuals. So I have to open up here uh, the selection and the bookmarks pane. So I'll open both of those up here and you'll see that I have this slicer pane uh, grouping here that has the, the shapes and all the buttons and they're hidden right now. So if I untoggle that, you'll be able to see all of those. So those have all been grouped together and uh, we've created uh, two bookmarks, one to toggle on the, uh, the bookmark and one to toggle it off. And then using a button, uh, we select bookmark here and then this one selects the slicer pane on, which uh, toggles that on. And then we also have uh, on here this uh, X um, button here, which allows us to toggle it off. So again, it's a bookmark and it's the other bookmark that we've created here. Last hack here is using custom tool tips to enhance the user experience. Do you ever feel like your dashboards could use a little extra detail and all without overwhelming the design? Well, that's where custom tooltips in Power BI come in. Custom tooltips are like mini pop-ups that show additional context when users hover over the visuals. And they are a quick way to provide extra insights, whether it's a detailed numbers, mini charts, or explanatory text. Uh, they're pretty awesome. And uh, the reason that they're very great is that they allow you to balance simplicity with depth. Your main report stays clean, while the tooltips offer all the detail your users might need right there on demand. Tooltips also encourage exploration. So when users uh, can hover and instantly get more information, it makes the dashboards more engaging and interactive. And uh, let's not forget, they're a client favorite. Combining sleek design with functionality, well, that's how you deliver dashboards that impress everyone. Setting up your custom tooltips is fairly easy. It's just a matter of opening up a new page here and uh, setting it up as allow use as tooltip, as you can see here. And by default, the, the canvas size is changes here now to a tooltip size, uh, which is the default. But you can also choose your own custom size. Uh, so whatever size you feel um, could provide the most uh, use for your users, you can use that here. Um, and as you can see here, we've already designed one uh, which has the, the month, the uh, revenue, as well as uh, some additional information by state. So that when we hover over, that's the information that gets filtered as we, the user interacts with this visual. Once you've set up your report page, setting up your uh, custom tooltip is pretty easy. You just have to choose the visual. And uh, from the uh, tooltips option here, you just have to select the report page for that and then just select your tooltip report page that you just created. So that's it. Those are seven Power BI hacks to enhance your dashboards and your reports in Power BI. They're tricks that have delighted our clients in 2024, and we're sure that it's going to delight your stakeholders in 2025. So if you like this video, be sure to hit the like button, and we'll see you in the next video.